What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back, everyone. This is Lee, and yesterday, today, we'll be talking about the Canon R5 versus the Nikon Z7 versus the Pentax K1. So, without further ado, let's begin. So, the Canon R5, this camera, 2020, body alone, cost 3000 900 USD, whereas the Nikon Z7, a 2018 camera. Yes, I know the next version is coming out next month, but uh, this version right now is costing around 2,600 USD. And this Pentax K1 Mark I is discontinued, but uh, this camera is roughly around four and a half years old to five years old in the springtime. They do make a version two of this camera, and that's roughly 1,800 USD. Now, in terms of megapixel, the Nikon and Canon is 45 megapixel, whereas the Pentax K1 is a 36 megapixel camera. Now as for a video, Pentax do not do video that well. They don't even have 4K in their video currently. For this K1, there's only 1080p, 24 frames per second. Whereas the Nikon Z7 is 4K, 24p. Of course, you get your 1080p and 24p, 60p and 120p. However, if you want to go higher than that, you want to get into the analog, the 10 bit, you will need an external recorder. Now, and as for the Canon R5, this camera was supposed to be an AK 4K oversampling monster. However, when it was released, it had the limitations, the overheating. Of course, Canon came out with documentations about it and folks weren't happy. They started to hack the system. Now, after a firmware update, this camera became a really good B-roll camera pretty much just a b-roll cameras if you're doing small spurts in the high hq mode then this camera will just do fine just make sure you turn off your camera in between takes but if you're doing long documentary type of filming definitely record in non-hq mode of course so if that's something for you guys to know now as for the viewfinder definitely the pentax is an ovf whereas the canon and nikon are evfs but the Canon EVF is 2020 and it's the latest and greatest. I could definitely tell the difference between the Canon and the Nikon. Now, as far as the back screen, definitely all three cameras have 3.2 inches. The Pentax is a one minute dot screen and it does not have touch. Now, with the Canon and Nikon, they both have 2.1 million dot screen with touch. Now, all three screens are quite different. The Canon R5 is a V-logging screen. So, you could clamp it and you could close it and you could protect your screen just like that. Now, for the Nikon, it's a traditional flip screen and I like the fact that it has two metal support for that flip screen. It's a lot sturdier than the Canon. Now, as for the Pentax, it has a flip screen and you could flip it to the left, you could flip it to the right, you could dangle it up in the air like crazy. It's the most sturdiest screen out the bunch and I would have to say that this camera do have Astro Tracer built inside the camera. So, when you are shooting the stars, the screen itself has LED lights to help you navigate around the camera. And that's a pretty nice touch to the screen. Now, the weight of these three cameras, the Canon R5 weighs about 746 grams, whereas the Nikon weighs roughly around 674 grams. And of course the Pentax weighs roughly around 1,015 grams. Now for the SD card, the Canon R5 takes one CF Express card, and that's a type B of course, uh, you would definitely need that car if you want to access the high-end recording, of course, and it also takes a UHS-2. Now, for the Nikon Z7, I know they fix this in the Mark II, but the uh, Nikon Z7 takes one XQD car, and that's kind of weird. But uh, the Pentax K1 takes two SD car, and I want to note that the Pentax SD car has a rubber cover on it, so it has more protection in harsh conditions. So the Canon and Nikon do not offer that. The Pentax pride themselves with their weather resistance. And as for weather resistance, most manufacturers just show a 3D model with wireframe and cool graphics. Since we cannot dig inside the camera and do measurements, we can definitely measure the outside. And I'm talking about the rubber doors, of course. Now, let's take a look at the R5 rubber doors. The R5 rubber doors are roughly 2.75 millimeters of thickness, whereas the Nikon is about 3.36 millimeters of thickness. And as for the Pentax, it's about 7.25 millimeters of thickness. Now, for those people that don't know much about the weather resistant on the Pentax, definitely go to YouTube, type in Pentax weather sealing. Now, that's something that I don't think Nikon or Canon even have out there in the wild. I think that the Pentax has the most documented weather ceiling demonstrations on the internet. So definitely take a look at that. And uh, for the frames per second, definitely Pentax is a whopping four and a half frames per second OVF. 
no blackouts. Whereas in Nikon, which is a mirrorless system and it's kind of complex, there's a mechanical and an electronic shutter. The mechanical is roughly around nine frames per second at 12 bits. You can shoot up to eight frames per second at 14 bits and 5.5 frames per second at 14 bits continuous. Now, for the electronic on the Nikon, it's roughly around eight frames per second, 12 bits, or 6.5 frames per second, 14 bits. And a continuous is about four frames per second, 12 bits. Now as for the R5, it's even more complex like anything. Basically a mechanical shutter, you're shooting 12 frames per second. Electronic shutter, you're shooting 20 frames per second. Now, this is what most people will talk about and advertise a lot about this camera. But what people don't know is electronic shutter, besides the rolling shutter, besides the bad bokeh and the bad noise in the shadows, you are shooting at 12 bit. Yes, when you're shooting electronic shutter, you're shooting at 12 bit. That's a dip. Now, for mechanical shutter, when your battery dips down one bar to 70%, it just goes to five frames per seconds. Yes, it goes from 12 frames per seconds to five frames per seconds. And it's it's not fun. It's, it's in your manual book. Even the Canon rep has directed me to that page. And as for the autofocus, if all three cameras have 100% battery life, 100%, the Canon R5 has the best autofocus out the bunch. Now for the Pentax, it's an OVF, so it does not have blackouts, right? The Nikon will get you that blackout, will get you that lag. Whereas the Canon R5, when your battery dips down, it gets pretty bad on the autofocus. It gets pretty bad on the blackouts and your camera will start freezing when your battery dips down even more. So here is an example of a frozen screen. As you can see, I even had enough time to get my phone out to record the screen. And you can see that square box right there. And yes, that is not the play button. That is the camera frozen. And as for the blackout, I mean, Nikon and Canon is the same thing. It looks like it's just very choppy. It's really hard to follow your subject in mechanical shutter. And for the autofocus, I mean, even in this example with my 100 to 500 RF lens, the autofocus point seems to drift off from a bird in the blue sky. Yes, that's very disappointing. With one bar removed from your camera, the autofocus seems to slouch a lot on this camera. So that's something for you guys to know. So with all that in mind, let's take a look at the image quality with all three cameras with one lens. The same Sam Yang 14 millimeter, well, Rokinon, 14 millimeter, two point aperture lens. Now here's the first scene. And already you can tell that the Canon has their signature color. It's a tint warmer on the Canon, whereas the Pentax and Nikon looks quite identical. So here is the next scene. As you can tell from afar, everything looks very identical. However, if you zoom in, you could clearly tell that the Canon, the street is slightly warmer than the streets on the Pentax and Nikon and the Nikon and the Pentax still looks kind of identical. If you take a look at the grass, it looks quite saturated on the Pentax and the Nikon. And here is a bathroom scene. All three looks more or less the same. I think the Pentax and Nikon look very similar while the Canon looks a bit brighter. Nothing too crazy, but it's very close. And here is my study room. And you can already tell that you can see that tint of red from the Canon whereas the greens from the Nikon and Pentax looks very similar. So here's my ISO test and basically I took a low light shot of the scene and I pushed out the exposure just to see if there's any crazy color shifts. And also I want to mention that the Pentax K1 is 36 megapixels. So definitely the ISO, the noise is a lot cleaner on the K1 versus the Canon and Nikon because they're at 45 megapixels. Now, the only thing that I saw that kind of brought to my attention was around 12,800 the Canon is slightly softer and that's about it. It's not a big deal, but that's something that I saw in my test. And for the next test, all I did was downsample the 45 megapixels down to 36 megapixel, and this is what it looks like. Now, I can definitely say that it looks very identical, but the K1 is a hair cleaner than the 45 megapixel downsample. And as for my dynamic range test, my previous test with the ISO, that is actually still a dynamic range test. That's the most practical dynamic range test, but this dynamic range test is really extreme. I shoot in pure darkness, and this is what it looks like in the bathroom. 
And as you can see, the can it falls apart. In this test, the color seems to break into like this pink and purple um, color scheme, whereas the Nikon seems to retain the color. However, it seems to fall on the greener side of things. And if you look at the plants side by side, I would definitely take the Nikon over the Canon because the plants on the Nikon seems to be a much more alive. Now, with the Pentax versus the Nikon, the Pentax is flat out much more cleaner in noise performance than the Nikon. However, if you look at the plants on the Nikon, I actually kind of prefer the plants on the Nikon versus the Pentax, but the Pentax is a lot cleaner than the Nikon. And as for the next test, I'm shooting this black book bag in the closet with no windows, and we just have one light turn on. So this is what the Canon looks like versus the Nikon. And you can already tell that the Canon cannot hold up in this low light scene. This is pretty bad. It's turning purple and basically it's just breaking up, right? So with the Nikon, it retains the colors. That's excellent. However, you do see some hot spots here and there. So if you're using the Canon, it's probably not good for extreme low light scene. Now, let's take a look at the Pentax versus the Nikon. And looking at the Pentax, the Pentax seems to do very well in this condition. Then the Nikon, the Pentax do not have those crazy hot spots like the Nikon. And as for the next scene, basically it's my plants and we have one artificial grow light in the back. And essentially, if you take a look, the Canon pretty much breaks apart again, basically. And if you look at the fonts, the font is kind of not as sharp as the Nikon. So that is something for people to know. I guess when the Canon is shooting at something that's really low light, it cannot record the scene. So if you're trying to push it out, it's just gonna be quite soft, purple and pink. And let's take a look at the Pentax versus the Nikon. And if you can take a look at the Pentax versus the Nikon, definitely hands down, the Pentax is still a lot cleaner than the Nikon. So this just means that the Pentax is number one, number two is the Nikon, and number three is the Canon. Now, with all that in mind, I just wanna let people know that the Pentax is an actual photography landscape camera. So they are really good in these certain conditions. Most folks don't realize about the Pentax, but that's just why we are doing these kind of tests. Now, just to wrap it up, Canon, Pentax, Nikon, I mean, all three cameras are three different kind of cameras pretty much. The Canon is basically for those filmmakers, hashtag photographers, whereas the Nikon is pure photography with some video elements, of course, whereas the Pentax is a weather resistant beast of the landscape and astrophotography cameras. So with all that said, at 3,900 USD, the Canon R5 have so many unwanted hidden features in this camera. And with the battery life being the big playmaker of it all, um, yeah, I don't think I could recommend this camera for anyone actually right now. I think people should stay away from this camera right now. I think Canon have a lot of things to fix on this camera. And also I wanna bring up this. This is also in your manual book. Basically, the longer you use your camera, the more irregular colors you're gonna get. Because when you're using your camera, you're generating this heat in the R5 and the sensor does not like it. So you're definitely gonna see a shift in tones and colors. People do not notice it right off the bat probably. I think it'll take a long time for people to notice, but uh, that is a huge problem for those time-lapse shooters. So definitely for the R5, I will not do any crazy time-lapse with this camera or any night photography with this camera. The R5 is not ready to go. I think many folks are using this camera, but they're probably not experiencing all these problems because they're not using no more than 30% of the battery life. <laughs> I mean, you get 12 frames per second, but then once your one bar dips, you just shoot five frames per second. I mean, what's the point at that? You may as well go buy a Nikon Z7, right? And I'm speaking about Nikon Z7, it's a different price bracket with the R5, it's 2600 versus 3900. And uh, I think folks that are buying the Nikon are basically pure photographers. I'm happy that Nikon is giving their end users more flexibility with the external monitor. However, with the Z7, I know this has been addressed already, 
I wish they had dual card slot. It's just so weird not to have dual card slot in this camera. And also the blackouts is very, yeah, it's pretty bad in the Z7. And also the eye tracking is not as good as the R5. It seems to be a hair behind. So hopefully Nikon do improve that, which they did. Hopefully they improved that, but we'll have to see. But with the Pentax, it's a four and a half euro camera. It does not have the battery performance issue like the Canon R5. It does not have the blackouts like the mirror system. It's just a straight on full frame DSLR. Now, I wish it did have four features, which are better autofocus, 4K video recording, hyper viewfinder for the eye tracking, and also more frames per seconds. Now, with all that in mind, I think that all three cameras have their purpose in the field. I think they have their own pros and cons, but all in all, I think that we are living in such a great time right now. We have cameras that can do movies, photo, astrophotography, landscape. I mean, this is a great time to definitely do photography. So with all that said, thank you guys for checking me back. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. Definitely click like and subscribe and don't forget to check out the merch store. And yep, take it easy. Peace.